guys, we're going to do kind of a quick and sort of fun one here. Going to show you a couple ways, both with and without a scope. Uh, but without a scope, you're going to need two digital multimeters, and it's a little convoluted. But a way to kind of catch a parasitic amp drain on a battery, or also catch a bad battery. Now, I don't have an actual real case study here. What I've got is just this bad battery that doesn't really hold a charge. I just use it for like bench testing things and stuff like that. But a lot of you guys asked about this from my previous video on the Suzuki with the actual amperage draw that we fixed. But I just wanted to show you a couple of other techniques that are actually pretty slick. So first of all, let me show you the load test that I do because a lot of people kind of doubted that. So let me show you. So we're going to start off with a good battery here. There is nothing wrong with the battery in this car right now. You can see we've got a full charge on the battery with our 13 volts there. And uh, oh, I just noticed I got the polarity reversed, but that's all right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the headlights and watch what happens. Okay, headlights on. You're going to see that it's going to drop down, just to show you the headlights on right there. Uh, we see it's going to drop down probably to about 12.2 volts or so. This is actually a fairly new battery. Okay, so we see it's stabilizing pretty good right now. And here's the thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in one minute. All right, so let me pause and I'll come back in one minute from now. Okay, a minute has expired and you can see that we're still holding well above 12.2 volts on this very good, relatively newer battery. So now what I'm going to do is let's repeat this test on a bad battery, one that would fail a load test, so that you don't have to take it to the parts store to test it. Okay, now what we're going to do is repeat that test with a bad battery. And uh, this one won't be the best uh, example for this, but the general principle still applies. So let's see, uh, that's been on the charger long enough, so we got 12. 6 volts. Notice it's dropping pretty quick because this battery is bad. But even if it held, the same thing would pretty much happen. It looks like it's starting to stabilize now. But let me go ahead and turn the lights on. Okay, and notice how it just drops extremely quickly. Now, here's the thing. On a bad battery, it doesn't necessarily have to drop that quick. But if it had dropped below 12 volts within, say, 2 minutes, I would have said that that battery is very weak. All right, so what I'm going to do now is use this battery as a good example to show you a whole different thing. I'm going to go ahead and charge it up, and I'm going to show you kind of a cool way to catch a parasitic amp draw that would be intermittent. Now, of course, that wouldn't apply to this battery, but I want this battery bad, and you'll see why when I set up what we're going to do. And yes, we are going to do this with the scope, but you can also do this with two DVOMs, and I'll show both methods. So I'm just going to go ahead and set this up while the battery's charging. And this is mostly for you guys that were wondering what I would have done if I still had trouble finding that parasitic draw on that last car. Uh, this would have been my plan. So what I would do is go to the graphing multimeter. And we're going to do two channels here. So the first one, I just need volts DC. And I'm going to make sure that my alligator clips are on channel one. So channel one is just going to be regular volts DC. And it looks like we're already set up. I want to be on a 20 volt scale and a long time frame, like five minutes will work just fine. And uh, it's already set up because I actually was playing around with the scope and kind of came up with this method and thought it would be pretty cool. Okay, so now we're going to go to channel two. And what I'm going to do on channel two is I'm going to use my amp clamp. And we're going to set to 20 amps on a 500 milliamp scale, again, five minutes. This scale, if you're actually suspecting a parasitic amp draw, you might want to set it up to five amps, but uh, this is just kind of for proof of principle, and this will work better if I use the 500 milliamp. But those are my settings on the scope, so I'm going to go ahead and let this battery charge up, and then I will show you what we're going to do. Okay, so now that I got my settings, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hook up my voltmeter here, and uh, we can see that we've got 12 volts there. And then the trick is I'm going to simultaneously hook up my amp clamp over the negative. Oops, looks like I got the polarity wrong there. Okay, so we got about 50 milliamps of draw there. And here's the trick. What we're going to do is, in order to catch when the parasitic drain would be happening, we're just going to go ahead and let this run. And, you know, on some batteries, it may take maybe two, three hours before this really happens. But what the idea is, we're going to look and see when the voltage drops to, like, whatever it would be that you couldn't start the car, was there an associated amp draw with it, or did the battery just drop out on its own? 
And oh, my apologies for the glare there. Okay, that should be a little better. Sorry about that. But what we're going to do is let this go ahead and cook for a little bit. So I'm going to just come back in about maybe about 30 minutes and let's see what it looks like. Okay, we've actually caught our problem within about five minutes actually. And I came back and looked at it and we can see that we're at about 10.4 volts. We can see the drop in the voltage, a very sudden kind of instantaneous drop in voltage. But the trick is there was no amperage draw associated with it. So that voltage drop just happened all on the battery's own without any load being placed on it. So if you were considering a parasitic amp draw as the problem with a vehicle like this that wouldn't start after some time had passed, we would say that there's not a parasitic amp draw from any type of accessories or anything like that from the car. The battery just dropped a cell because you look and uh, each cell in the battery is going to be like around two volts or so. And we obviously dropped about two volts. So we've got a bad cell in the battery that just died all on its own. Another possibility that we might have seen is that over a long course of time, the battery dropped from 12 and a half volts down to, say, 10 volts, but there wasn't just a sudden drop. But this is clearly indication of a bad battery right there. Alternatively, we might have seen something like this. Okay, so let me turn on the lights. And what we see here is a spike, of course, in the amperage draw, and then we're going to see the battery voltage, of course, start dropping as a result of that spike in the amperage. This would be catching an intermittent parasitic amp draw for sure. Now, this, of course, doesn't help you with where it is, but this would be absolute confirmation that this would be why the battery is dying overnight. A lot of you are saying that they've had issues like this with intermittent problems with things like alarm systems and aftermarket accessories and I concur that is indeed what I have seen too. So pretty cool way of doing this. Now for those of you guys that don't have a scope it should be very obvious that you would be able to do this just the same with two DVOMs. One measuring voltage and the other one in series with one of the battery cables measuring amperage. But the trick is you'd have to sit there and watch it to make sure that that's what was happening. Or I guess you could set up a video camera or something like that. But obviously you would be able to do it with two DVOMs, just a little more convoluted. But anyway, there you have it. Quick and simple, kind of fun one for you guys. We'll see you next time. Okay, I had a change of heart. I decided to go ahead and show the two meters knowing that some people are gonna cry foul because I gave favoritism to the scope and we don't do that on this channel. So what we would do in this situation if we were suspecting a parasitic amp draw, the meter with the green shell is in series with the negative cable detecting amperage on a 10 amp scale. And then we've got, of course, just plain voltage detection over on this meter. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the charger. And what we would do is just let a video camera sit here and catch until we drop our voltage. We may have to come back in again 30 minutes or so. My guess is this will happen within five minutes. Don't worry, I won't make you wait five minutes. The reason no amperage is showing in my meter, we covered that in the last video, it's because this meter does not have the sensitivity to go below 100 milliamps is why. But it is definitely, there is definitely some milliamperage there. If we have a spike in amperage, we would see it on that meter. And as a matter of fact, I'll prove it later. So I'm going to go ahead. Now I've got to let the camera just run. So I'm going to let the camera run for five minutes here and we will come back when we drop our voltage. Okay, I came back after about 10 minutes and we can see that our voltage dropped to below 10 and a half. Now, of course, we don't know if that would have been as the result of an amp draw unless we play back the video. So let me go ahead and play back the video for you guys and we'll see if we can catch where this happened.
Okay, so as you can see in the playback there, there was no amperage draw. Just to show that there is indeed correct connection here, I'm going to go ahead and turn on an accessory light. We can see that we do have amperage draw. So very good, simple test if you're having an intermittent problem or a really delayed problem to identify whether you've got a battery issue or an actual parasitic draw on the battery. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you found it helpful. We'll see you next time.